Hey folks, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. Let's discuss the astrology of the second half of August 2019 from the 15th until the 30th of the month. So we're going to discuss the significant transits and the major configurations of energy. So we're going into the second half of August with an Aquarius full moon. We have some important Mercury transits to discuss and we have a massive lineup in Virgo that culminates in a Virgo new moon at the end of the month. So we're going to be looking at all of this. So as usual, I'm going to hop off screen and do this as a screencast so you can follow the chart as I go along. All right, so we are going into the second half of August with a full moon in Aquarius. So we see here on the chart that uh, the Leo sun at 22 degrees uh, is opposite the moon at 22 degrees Aquarius, full moon, sun opposite moon. So this full moon is bringing into focus the Leo Aquarius uh, polarity. So we also notice that we have a constellation of planets in Leo at this full moon. Mercury is in Leo. And then we have the Sun, uh, Venus and Mars in a conjunction and the Sun and Venus at exactly 22 uh, degrees of Leo here opposing the moon at 22 degrees of Aquarius. So the Sun and Leo bring our focus to this idea of expressing ourselves, our purpose, and our individuality in authentic ways. So Venus in Leo, like we've been saying on the channel recently, uh, plugs us into the notion of connecting with others based on authenticity of self-expression using our personal authenticity of self-expression to uplift and to inspire others and Mars points to the idea of letting our actions be guided by real authenticity of purpose and being ourselves. So these are the higher attributes of Leo. So this full moon along the Leo Aquarius polarity reminds us that our individuality, the sun, Leo, exists in a broader collective context, Aquarius. So we have here the relationship between who we are on the individual level and how we participate with others, Venus, Aquarius. So how we individually participate in a collective context in relationship to the broader whole. So with the Aquarius full moon on deeper emotional and psychic levels, we are plugged into and we are reminded of our relationship relationship with the rest of the species we are a part of, and that species, of course, being humanity. So using traditional rulerships now, when we look to the ruler here of this uh, full moon in Aquarius, we find Saturn in Capricorn, and Saturn in Capricorn points us to this idea of responsibility. So the, the collective is sort of in this process of dealing with uh, questions of responsibility in big broad ways as Saturn is in Capricorn and as Saturn is at the Capricorn South Node. So this Aquarius moon has a Capricorn flavoring here and with that comes the idea of collective uh, Aquarius, responsibility, Saturn. So what is coming into our awareness at this time is the importance of our collective responsibility, especially at this time on the planet, a very important evolutionary moment for us all, symbolized by Saturn and Pluto's uh, protracted presence here at the South Node and the impending Saturn-Pluto uh, conjunction there in Capricorn. So with Saturn's rulership of this moon, we are plugging right back into Saturn-Pluto at the South Node. So this moon reminds us of the role that we individually play within a broader collective and the responsibility that we have toward fellow humans. And that responsibility 
who demand nothing less than standing in the authenticity of our individual purpose, Sun, Leo. In other words, uh, being true to what you are, radiating your essence outward, contributing your creative self-expression and individuality, uh, Sun, Leo, toward a purpose that is larger than you. A project that is larger than you, but within which you are a key individual element, and that is the human project. So, in these very uh, testing times on the planet, more is being demanded of us. Being true to, let's say, our soul expression, uh, even if that goes against the grain of whatever programming we've been taught to accept. So, Aquarius is twofold. It at once represents a broader collective awareness and a desire to move the collective forward, but it often does this by having the strength to stand in its own authentic self-expression, even if that defies the status quo. So Aquarius represents allegiance to the collective, even if it means, ironically, that it has to depart from the usual ways things are to bring the collective forward or to advance it. And as we undergo the growing pains of remembering who we are, as there is societal and institutional decomposition and breakdown, uh, Saturn Pluto, as all of this is going on because we have based our social structures on, let's say, uh, outdated notions of what the human being really is and what the human being is capable of, we're going to need the energy of Aquarius to take us into new territory, which will no doubt involve shattering some paradigm. So we will need people who have the courage to think for themselves and to be true to their own self-expression. So these are some things to think about, and perhaps you think about this in relation to yourself, your own life, and who you are here to be at this time on the planet. So as usual, I dedicated a whole video to discussing and reflecting on the contours and the nuances of this moon. So rather than repeat too much of that here, I'll just, as usual, direct you to that video. I'll leave it in a pinned comment below the video and I'll also put it up in the end screen. So uh, it will be there for you to have a look at. But for now, uh, let's move on to discussing the rest of the key transits and the events of the month. All right, so from August 14 to 19, but exact on the 16th, we have Mercury in Leo dancing in a square with Uranus in Taurus. So we see on the chart here that on August 16, uh, Mercury is at six degrees of Leo, squaring up with Uranus at six degrees of Taurus. So what we're seeing here is the completion of a process that began while Mercury was retrograde. So we recall that as Mercury stationed retrograde in July, from about uh, July 7 to 15, Mercury was squaring up with Uranus. Uh, then Mercury continued to travel backward, dipping into Cancer, and then finally going direct and uh, going back into Leo. So what we're looking at uh, is the second Mercury uh, Uranus square here. And we'll notice a few things here as well. When Mercury in Leo first squared up with Uranus in Taurus, Mercury was retrograde and Uranus direct. Now we have the reverse where uh, Uranus is now retrograde and uh, Mercury is direct. So in this second square here, we have Mercury triggering the point at which uh, Uranus stationed retrograde. And as we mentioned uh, in the astrology of August part one, Uranus stationed retrograde at six degrees of Taurus. So let's backtrack a little bit. So we had Mercury retrograde and implicit in the logic of Mercury retrograde is the idea of reviewing and reflecting, recalibrating our perception. And that Mercury retrograde squared Uranus in Taurus 
uh, Uranus also acting as a recalibrating influence in terms of uh, Uranus acting to adjust the established patterns of our thinking, allowing us to perceive differently and to admit new insights into our perceiving awareness. So Mercury retrograde and the first square to Uranus had this recalibrating effect. Now we have a second phase of the process here in terms of adjusting our thinking and admitting new data into our perceiving awareness. So the second phase here in terms of opening up the field of our perception, Mercury, Uranus. So we also mentioned in the astrology of August part one that uh, with Uranus retrograde in terms of a personal psychological process, we are paying attention to planets and points in our charts uh, roughly from six degrees of Taurus down until two degrees uh, of Taurus and the fixed sign. So we said that Uranus retrograde would sort of symbolically represent the evolutionary task that we have to decondition patterns in relation to planets and points in this degree range. So uh, if Uranus is contacting any planets around six degrees of the fixed signs, this Mercury uh, Uranus square is really facilitating new awareness and fresh perspective in terms of this process of deconditioning. So for example, uh, let's say that Uranus at six degrees is contacting or triggering, say, uh, your natal Venus. So let's say that you're in an overall process of deconditioning and repatterning how you would show up in your relationship. So Mercury now, as it enters the mix once more, would, would support further new awareness, insight, revelation and perspective in terms of this overall process uh, of uh, Uranus to your Venus, as an example. But in broad terms, uh, during this band of time, roughly from August 14 to 19, we may witness collectively that we may be confronted with data that challenges our perceptions and data that forces us to readjust our perceiving lens somewhat. And we mentioned in the astrology of August part one that we have to take into account that we are dealing with Mercury in Leo and Mercury in Leo being a fixed sign can often be uh, inflexible or uh, unyielding in terms of admitting or absorbing new information, especially if this information upsets its sense of personal pride. So we may witness this dynamic playing itself out on collective levels. But in general terms, we know that uh, Uranus is an influence that excites and stimulates and speeds things up. So we have here an energy which supports uh, speeding up of perception and uh, stimulating here the flow of data and energy which supports a stimulation and excitation of our perception and our intellect. So we may find ourselves confronted with new ideas. We may find ourselves confronted with notions that upset or shock our intellectual positions or the way we perceive the world. So this square supports the emergence of qualities of the usual sorts of intellectual originality, usual in terms of a uh, kind of characteristic expression of Mercury Uranus, uh, intellectual originality, independence, perception of higher truths. And Uranus is often described as the so-called higher octave of Mercury. So we have the usual perceiving uh, collective mind, that's Mercury, supported by access to higher truth or uh, fields of data which fall outside of our usual perception, that's Uranus. So Uranus represents higher mental intuition, a perception that is highly intuitive because it represents an extension of our rational processes into these fields of, let's say, cosmic data or the universal mind. And secondly, a perception that is highly intuitive because 
there is a way in which the speed of calculation of data is so fast that it bypasses the usual rational processes that we recognize. So uh, Uranus is higher rationality, uh, let's say, and this is the tone of this uh, Mercury-Uranus square, a push into higher levels of rational calculation and comprehension, which manifests as intuitive insight. On the other hand, uh, with this mercury arena square, we want to be mindful of making judgments that are premature, uh, overstimulation of mind, a sort of lack of tact, a sort of intellectual obstinacy and inability to see other points of view. All right, so uh, let's move on to what's next here. All right, so on August 18, uh, Mars leaves fiery Leo and enters the rather less uh, conspicuous Virgo, Earth sign. So we see on the chart here that Mars is at zero degrees entering the sixth house of the chart. And the usual reminder here that we use natural houses in these videos as they're kind of just easier to follow uh, for our purposes. But uh, the sixth house is naturally affiliated with the sign of Virgo. So natural houses. All right, so Mars represents our collective faculty of self-assertion, how we pursue what we want, how we move toward our desires, how we translate our beingness into action, our drive, our initiative, how we express aggression even. So in Virgo, Mars is colored by underlying Virgo needs, the need for efficient functioning, the need for humble, useful service, the need for problem solving, the need for a systematic approach. So in Virgo, our collective self-assertion and the way in which we pursue our desires are informed by a certain Virgoan uh, precision and efficiency. So using discriminating analytical calculation and scrutiny to realize our ends and to pursue our goals. So Mars in Virgo is the strategist. The discriminating analytical mind informs how we take action. So Mars in Virgo describes the need for a systematic approach with steps and a sort of order. So it's not the more flamboyant self-assertion of Leo, the preceding sign, but asserting the self with far more modesty. So our MO is informed by a sort of perfectionism and a need for meticulousness and attention to detail in the way that we act. So the pursuance of our desires, Mars, is bound up with the pursuance of perfection, Virgo. So Mars in Virgo describes an approach of thinking before one acts, uh, scrutinizing the detail. So with Mars in Virgo, we are also motivated by the need to be useful and efficient and to serve. So actions need to have a practical utility. So Mars in Virgo, uh, action in service to health and the maintenance of the body. So in broad terms, these are the contours of Mars uh, in the sign of Virgo. And Mars will be in Virgo until the beginning of October there. So uh, there's that. Uh, now let's move on to what's next. All right, so we see that we have Venus following suit. So on August 21, Venus enters Virgo. So we see it here at zero degrees, entering the sixth house of the chart. So Venus represents our approach to partnering and the establishment of relationships our approach to resource acquisition. It represents our personal uh, sense of value or sense of personal value, uh, worth, self-esteem, also what we find pleasure and enjoyment in. So Venus too is colored by these underlying Virgoan needs, the need for humble, useful service, the need for modesty, very, very different from Venus in Leo. 
uh, which can describe strong needs for personal recognition in relationships. So uh, with Venus in Virgo, in broad terms, uh, we need to connect with others on the basis of service. So we find pleasure and emotional satisfaction in being analytical and efficient and meticulous. So we offer these qualities of efficiency and meticulousness and problem solving in our interactions with others. So qualities of uh, industriousness and perfectionism and meticulousness, helpfulness, all of those things inform our approach to how we acquire resources. So we feel a sense of personal worth and self-esteem when we're able to be helpful and efficient and useful and skillful. The challenge though with Venus in Virgo sometimes is that our capacity to be critical overwhelms our interactions with others. So in our interactions with others, we're always pointing to, uh, you know, what is wrong, pointing out what is wrong, what needs correction. So we can be over helpful and fault finding things which can get in the way of give and take with others. So things which can inhibit relating and connecting with others. So again, these are some of the tones here of Venus in Virgo. Venus will be in Virgo until the middle of September. So we also notice here that as soon as Venus enters Virgo, it engages Mars in a conjunction. So we have Venus and Mars dancing in a conjunction from August 22 uh, until the end of the month, roughly. And that uh, conjunction becomes exact on the 24th, I believe. So we have a fusion here of Venus and Mars with a Virgo twist. And this supports an intensification of our need to act to serve others or to be useful and helpful in our interactions with others. Again, intensifying pleasure and enjoyment in Virgoan contexts in the context of pragmatic service, uh, in our routines, in how we maintain our daily lives, experiencing uh, emotional warmth and vitality when we are connecting with others on the basis of being useful and helpful. But in Venus-Mars exchanges in general, uh, the conjunction here being the most potent, we may find ourselves being especially motivated, that's Mars, uh, by the experience of pleasure and enjoyment, that's Venus. So we deal with the interplay uh, with Venus-Mars, the interplay between affection and closeness, that's Venus, and strife or discord in our relationships, that's Mars. Uh, on the one hand, we can experience states of more harmony with others, that's Venus, when we're acting to pursue our desires, Mars, or we can experience an inability to compromise with others in the pursuit of what we want. So these are all potentials of a Venus-Mars conjunction. So passionate enthusiasm for life, strong needs for sensual and uh, erotic gratification, expressing love and affection in intense ways, uh, Mars to Venus, these are the contours there of uh, Venus and Mars dancing together in a conjunction. All right, so uh, let's go on to what's next. Now, from August 19 to 23, but exact on August 21, we have Mercury in Leo dancing in a trine with uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius. So we see on the chart here that uh, Mercury at 14 degrees of Leo is trine Jupiter at 14 degrees of Sagittarius. So in broad terms, uh, Mercury trine Jupiter supports expansion of perspective seeing the bigger picture, holistic thinking, being able to connect the dots, a big picture, integrative, synthesized understanding of what's going on. So the challenge though with uh, Mercury-Jupiter uh, is that uh, the challenge with Mercury-Jupiter exchanges is, uh, let's say, leaps of logic which get in the way of clarity or jumping to conclusions. Uh, Mercury-Jupiter, glossing over 
some of the necessary details because of our keenness to hold on to a certain position or to advance a certain intellectual position. So we have a Mercury-Jupiter trine, but the condition of that Mercury is modified by a couple of other things that we want to take note of. So we see that while Mercury is trying Jupiter, it's also in conjunct or quincunct Saturn, 150 degree angular relationship. So on the chart, we're seeing that at Mercury, 14 degrees of Leo in conjunct or quincunct Saturn at 14 degrees of Capricorn. So at Mercury and Saturn are dancing in this in conjunct or quincunct from August 20 to 23. But we also see that uh, Mercury is also in conjunct or quincunx Neptune. Yes, so again, Mercury 14 degrees, Leo, Neptune 17 degrees, Pisces. So uh, Mercury uh, also there in the in conjunct with uh, Neptune from August 21 to 24. And that becomes exact on August 21. So the bigger picture here. Uh, is that as Mercury is trying Jupiter, we also have the energy of that Mercury being modified by the inconjuncts to Saturn and to Neptune. So Mercury is also being modified by its connection to Saturn and to Neptune. And these inconjuncts or quincunxes uh, are going to be modifying the expression of that uh, Mercury-Jupiter trine. So we have a Mercury which, because of its connection to Jupiter, is already likely to sort of make these enthusiastic leaps, which, as we said, can potentially get in the way of true understanding. So uh, Mercury is in conjunct Saturn, which can play itself out as a sort of resistance to grounded practicality of thought, a resistance to a sort of disciplined thought process and facing things concretely. So the inconjunct or quincunx here describes a certain resistance to uh, a certain discipline of mind, which we may have a heightened awareness of in the collective during this window of time as Mercury engages Saturn. And while that's going on, uh, Mercury's in conjunct to Neptune can describe where our thought process is challenged to integrate Neptune's energy uh, in productive ways. So we might be prone to flights of fancy or we may be challenged to have a clear thinking. So on one level, Mercury, Neptune can represent states of perceptual confusion and a lack of clarity. So Mercury challenged to integrate that Neptunian energy there. So. When we put all of this together, we are seeing where on the collective level, we have a convergence of energies which may pose certain uh, perceptual challenges, a certain over-enthusiasm with this uh, Mercury-Jupiter fire trine there, Leo Sagittarius, uh, compounded by a certain resistance to slow down and look at things concretely, Mercury-Saturn, and also compounded by a tendency toward flights of fancy or unclear thought processes. So in a rush of enthusiasm, we jump, that's Jupiter, uh, we jump to accept certain ideas because we haven't scrutinized them with enough discipline of mind, that's Saturn, and because we may have on certain rose-colored glasses, uh, Neptune, which may obscure the truth of the matter. So we may have a heightened awareness of this dynamic playing itself out on uh, collective levels. All right, so we said quite a lot there. Let's go on to uh, what's next, the sun uh, entering Virgo. All right, so we see the sun here entering Virgo, uh, leaving Leo and entering Virgo. The sun here now at zero degrees of the sign, joining Venus and Mars over here. So we're seeing a constellation of energies, of planets, within Virgo uh, begin to take shape. So the Virgo field is now being strongly activated by the sun, uh, Venus, and Mars. So 
in general terms, we have the collective self-expression being conditioned by these underlying uh, Virgo needs that we've been talking about, the need for efficient functioning, the need to be useful and to be helpful in tangible and pragmatic ways, the need to be of service, the need for discrimination and the use of the analytical mind to problem solve, to improve, to correct and to refine the need for health and maintenance of the body. So the sun in the sign is highlighting these needs within the collective and uh, collectively aligning our self-expression with these psychic motivations, the psychic motivations of Virgo. All right, so uh, let's go on. All right, so we see here that we have this cluster of planets in Virgo, all trine Uranus in Taurus. So on the chart, we have Venus at six degrees of Virgo, perfecting its trine with Uranus at six degrees of Taurus. Now, in early August, we had Venus in Leo, squaring Uranus in Taurus. Now, Venus has moved into a new phase relationship with Uranus, the trine. So we mentioned in the astrology of August part one that on a personal psychological level, Venus squaring Uranus may have brought to the foreground of our awareness the need for us to depart from certain approaches in terms of how we show up in our relationships to alter the patterning of how we show up in our relationships and that the square may have also brought into our awareness the need for us to adjust certain patterns in terms of our approach to self-worth and personal value or even to what we value. So as Venus moves into the trine here, uh, we begin a process of stabilizing and anchoring the new awareness we might have gained in terms of our need for change of how we do our Venus. So trines represent a stabilization of energy flow. So reminding you too that I have a two-hour downloadable class on aspects available on my website. So if you need some help in getting to the heart of aspects, you can see if that will support you. So in that class, we're not just describing aspects, but we are penetrating into their deeper logic. So why they are the way they are. So uh, Mars is trying uh, Uranus, Mars 5 degrees Virgo, Uranus 6 degrees Taurus. Mars-Uranus uh, exchanges fundamentally represent dynamic energies because of the nature of the planets involved. So Mars invigorates and Uranus excites and stimulates. So the two lend themselves towards speed and excitation and we can certainly see this playing out within the collective. Whereas the opening square, which we had at the beginning of July, whereas at that opening square, uh, Mars Uranus represented where there was, relatively speaking, a more dynamic state of internal tension between Mars and Uranus and the need for release of energy, the trine again uh, speaks to now more of a stabilization of the energy flow. So we are integrating our needs for independent autonomous action. We are stabilizing with this Mars uh, Uranus trine here. We are stabilizing and integrating our new approaches to how we pursue what we want and our new approaches to how we exercise our initiative, that's Mars. So with Mars trying Uranus, we are supported to experiment and to find new approaches to how we apply our energy and uh, to how we go about getting things done. And then we have the Sun trying Uranus, moving into the trine, applying to the exact trine. And that symbolizes an overall process of integrating Uranian impulses into our collective self-expression sun on the whole. So with the sun and Uranus interchanging energy, and of course, along with that Mars 
on psychic levels within the collective there are heightened needs for autonomy and freedom and excitement so the energy supports new avenues for the expression of our creativity a heightened sense of vitality or let's say a stimulation uranus of our vital energies sun and creative self-expression so unpredictable self-expression which may lend itself to a sort of experimental creativity that's the uh, phrase there for uh, sun uranus of course we're looking at a cluster of virgo energy here as uranus trines all of these planets and especially as uranus trines the virgo sun so new expression and breakthroughs in virgo domains health and the body approaches to work uh, one's daily environment and all the activities that we do to maintain our physical existence here in a body all right so let's see what's happening next here All right, so on August 29, we see that Mercury leaves Leo and enters Virgo. So on the chart, we see Mercury at zero degrees entering the sign, which is, of course, its home sign. Mercury governs uh, Virgo. So we have a double emphasis there on the Mercury-Virgo uh, matrix, the Sun, uh, Venus, and Mars being disposited by uh, Mercury. So Mercury, of course, being in its home sign of Virgo. So planets in Virgo report to Mercury. So again, as we mentioned, the Virgo field now being highly, highly activated by the presence of the Sun, Venus and Mars, and of course, Mercury in the sign, in its home sign. Now with Mercury in Virgo, our perceptual processes are colored even more by discrimination and analytical precision and attention to detail. So Mercury in Virgo is like a fine tooth comb. So with Mercury in Virgo, our perception and thinking and communication are motivated by the need for systematizing, putting things together in a sort of pragmatic order. Of course, the phrase, uh, not seeing the forest for the trees precisely describes the challenges inherent in Virgo Mercury. There is such a thing as paying too much attention to detail, which can definitely hamper one's perceptions and one's ability to comprehend. All right, so let's go on to the last thing here. So we end the month of August and we go into September with a new moon in Virgo. So on the chart, we're seeing that the sun and the moon join up at six degrees of the sign. So it's an extremely potent emphasis on Virgo here as we have a constellation, a mega conjunction of Mercury, the sun, the moon, Mars and Venus all in Virgo and the Sun, Moon, Mercury and Mars are all trine Uranus. So this new moon is really a culmination of all that we've been discussing. The uh, astrological influences all converge at this new moon. So the inner planets all entering Virgo, Mercury, uh, moon, Sun, Mars, Venus, all the inner planets in Virgo and dancing in a trine with Uranus in Taurus. So as usual, I'm going to dedicate a separate video to reflecting on the larger uh, spiritual imperatives and implications of this massive uh, Virgo lineup here, Virgo, an archetype that is somewhat undervalued or overlooked in our current moment. The values of Virgo, the dignity of being in a human body, the spiritual value of tending to the maintenance of your daily physical existence and treating that with the dignity it deserves. So Virgo really is such a useful compass in navigating our current moment. So we're going to reflect on that somewhat. So you can look out for that video. In the meantime, as usual, I'm available for private 
uh, astrological counseling consultations and links to that are in the description box below and reminding you to that if you'd like these videos to be sent to your inbox uh, with the astrology of the first half and then the second half of the month you can sign up to join my email list and you'll also get my gift to you so wishing you an enjoyable rest of the month and i'll be back in about two weeks or so with the astrology of september so take good care intend to be in the right place at the right time and until next time talk soon Bye.